What if DJI just took the Avatar platform and turned it into a full spherical camera that shoots everything around you in one take? Today, we're diving into the Avatar 360 leaks to figure out whether this is a genuine game changer or just a shiny concept. I'll walk you through the design clues from the leaks. Why transplanting Osmo 360 imaging into an Avatar frame matters. The flight and safety trade-offs to watch for. How your editing workflow will change and the one practical reason you might still wait before buying. Stick around. The part about stitching and vibration damping later is the tiny technical problem that will decide whether Aerial 360 becomes mainstream. Think about it. FPV freedom meets immersive spherical capture. Right now, creators either fly fast FPV rigs that capture a single perspective, or they rig heavy 360 setups that are awkward and often fragile. The Avatar 360 promises a third path, an agile ducted FPV airframe paired with twin large sensors that can capture native spherical video that could make 360 footage less fiddly and more usable for VR, mapping and cinematic work. If DJI actually pulls this off, pilots will stop choosing where to point the camera and start choosing where to fly. And that creative freedom is huge. Leaks show a twin lens sphere mounted on a familiar avatar body and suggest DJI might reuse the Osmo 360 imaging approach. That means larger sensors, better dynamic range and the possibility of native 8000 spherical capture. But bigger sensors and dual lenses change aerodynamics and add weight. DJI will need tighter vibration control, optimized gimbal mounts and smarter stitching software to avoid visible seams and ghosting. The good news is DJI already has the hardware and software experience. The challenge is tuning it for airborne vibration and varied lighting across the full sphere. A lightweight avatar chassis kept the original model nimble in tight spaces. Add a heavy dual lens camera and batteries change shape, flight time will shift and handling could become less forgiving. Leaks hint at upgraded sensing and possibly LiDAR to help with obstacle avoidance, which would be a sensible countermeasure if DJI wants safe spherical capture where pilots do not have a single forward view. Transmission upgrades and improved goggles are likely, but expect realistic flight times to be shorter than the non-360 model. In short, you might lose a few minutes of airtime for a huge gain in footage versatility. Shooting everything in 360 is liberating, but it is also heavier on storage and processing. 8,000 spherical files are massive and require powerful editing machines, advanced stitching and new stabilization plugins that understand spherical motion. DJI could simplify this by offering integrated stitching and smart reframing tools in their apps, but pros will still need robust workflows and backup strategies. If you make VR experiences, real estate tours or immersive maps, the Avatar 360 could save time on set. For daily social clips, expect larger files and more post work unless DJI provides solid automated pipelines. Even if the product is real, regional availability could be patchy. Added weight and new sensor modules could push the Avatar 360 into stricter drone categories in some countries, slowing certification and delaying US availability. If you need a guaranteed global launch, expect delays. But if you can wait, this could be worth it once DJI locks in safety and firmware stability. For now, the current Avatar lineup is the safer choice for pure FPV. But if 360 capture is your thing, these leaks are genuinely exciting. Which part grabs you most? 8K potential, reframing freedom, or flying without pointing? Drop your thoughts below. What if DJI made the pocketable drone you actually want to take everywhere? Today we're unpacking the Neo 2 to see whether it fixes the original Neo's annoying flaws and becomes the definitive palm launch drone for casual creators. I'll cover the visible design tweaks, the new dual axis gimbal and image upgrades, the big leap in obstacle sensing, flight behavior and battery realities, plus pricing and who should buy it. Stick around, the obstacle avoidance section is the part that turns a clumsy toy into something you can trust in real environments. The Neo 2 keeps the familiar whoop style but feels more considered. 
it is roughly 151 grams without the transceiver and about 160 grams with it. Keeping it under the key registration limit in many countries, DJI trimmed weight, tightened joints, added a small front display, and introduced a rear transceiver pod on certain versions that enables remote controllers and headsets. The propeller guards are still integrated which keeps it safe for busy public shoots and the little front display finally replaces confusing icons with readable telemetry. These are subtle changes, but they matter when you're shooting fast and do not want to fumble for your phone. Image hardware looks similar on paper but behaves better. The Neo 2 reportedly runs the same 12 megapixel 1 half inch sensor but now uses a mechanical two axis gimbal instead of a single axis mount paired with Rocksteady electronic stabilization and improved processing. That combo keeps horizons level during aggressive moves and gives you smoother pans and tilts without heavy cropping. Video options move up too, with higher frame rate modes that make slow motion useful rather than gimmicky. In practical terms, footage looks cleaner and more usable straight out of the drone, which is exactly what casual creators need. This is the Neo 2's headline. DJI added omnidirectional sensing with a mix of vision sensors, forward-facing LiDAR, and downward infrared detection. Where the original Neo could be crash-prone in automated modes, the Neo 2 reads its surroundings and avoids obstacles proactively. Forward sensors detect objects at distances useful for higher speed flight, while other sensors handle close-in maneuvers. For beginners and travelers, that means means fewer heart-stopping moments and less dependence on manual control. If crash risk was your main hesitation with the Neo, this change alone makes the Neo 2 feel like a different class of product. In the air, the Neo 2 feels calmer and more mature. The upgraded motors and tuned flight controller resist wind better and hover with less twitch. You can fly controller free with the handy front display and three side buttons. Or bring in the DJI Fly app for more precise inputs. Or use an RC controller where available. The optional transceiver expands compatibility with DJI accessories, but is not required for standard operation. Flight time still trends toward short sessions. So multiple batteries remain a sensible purchase but improved efficiency means more useful airtime per battery than before. The Neo 2 launches in tiered packages, a base drone option, a fly more combo with extra batteries, and a motion combo that adds a motion controller and immersive headset adapter. The price increased modestly versus the original Neo but the added dual-axis gimbal, enhanced sensors, doubled onboard storage, and improved telemetry show clear value. For first-time buyers, the base kit looks compelling. For creators who want longer shoots and more control, the Fly More or Motion bundles become attractive. Also note, DJI's regional availability remains selective, which may affect purchase options in some countries. If you want a truly pocketable drone that produces usable cinematic clips and reduces the chance of accidental loss, the Neo 2 is a meaningful upgrade and a solid buy. If you only need quick social clips and already own the original Neo, it is less urgent, though the better stabilization and sensing are tempting. For travelers, vloggers and beginners who value one-handed launches and safer automated shots, this is one of the most sensible, affordable options on the market right now. Which feature would push you to upgrade? The dual-axis gimbal, the omnidirectional avoidance, or the motion bundle extras? Drop your pick in the comments, like if this helped, and subscribe for the full footage breakdown and side-by-side -side comparisons next.